you may have heard about the Lehman Brothers and how it led to a market crash. Now, they are saying that Evergrande could be the Lehman Roman of China. Hi, I'm Frankie. Welcome back to my fuck show, Frankie Answers Questions. Today, we are going to talk about Evergrande, how it climbed its way to the largest property developer in China and the fall from Greece. More importantly, how could it possibly lead to a global market meltdown? The most serious recession in decades. Question 1. Who is Evergrande? Evergrande was founded in 1996 when China was undergoing a mass urbanization development. In the midst of such opportunities, they quickly rose to become one of the largest property developers in China. By 2020, they are ranked 122 on the Fortune Global 500, making it not just a giant in China, but globally. Mr. Worldwide! Today, Evergrande owns more than 1,003 projects in more than 280 cities across China. On a broader scale, the Evergrande Group today now encompasses far more than just real estate developments. It has its footprint ranging from wealth management, making electric cars, food manufacturing, and more. It even owns one of the China's biggest football teams, Guangzhou FC. Question 2. What's with the recent buzz about Evergrande? One word, debt. Although Evergrande is one of the largest companies globally, it is also the most indebted company in the world. Today, the company carries a whooping $300 billion debt in its balance sheet, owing to around 171 domestic banks and 121 other financial institutions in total. To give you a comparison, Malaysia's total national debt is only at $209 billion. That's f***ing a lot of money! All this was fine until 2020, when China introduced new policies to tighten regulations for loans to the real estate sector and home mortgage loans. Immediately, this led to a credit crunch and affected Evergrande's modest operandi at making money. I am never going to financially recover from this. Question 3. Evergrande has been indebted for so long. Why only now got problem? For this, I have to tell you a story about the property development sector in China. How it works. In a communist country like China, nobody except the government owns all the land. When you want to develop a piece of land in China, you have to list it from the government. So, for Evergrande, it leases land from the government. Then, pre-sell that particular project to potential home buyers. After collecting a bunch of deposits, instead of kickstarting the construction works, they would use the money as collateral to borrow more money from banks to lease more land for subsequent projects. By leveraging on huge amount of debts, Evergrande managed to quickly grow its business in a short period of time. This would have been fine if the banking policy remained the same. But unfortunately... <sighs> Question 4. What are these new banking rules about? Over the past decade, China has been experiencing a property boom. Property prices in urban areas shot up to the roof. Many middle-income people struggle to own a house, while the rich are investing in properties. This has been a worry for the Chinese government. Therefore, in order to curb further rising of property prices, the government decided to clamp down on property loans, the main vehicle that enables property speculation. Under the new regulations, domestic banks are required to limit the amount they lend to property developers and home buyers. From the 1st of January 2021 onwards, banks have a hard limit on the ratio between their outstanding property loans and the total RMB loans, which literally stops extensive liquidity flowing into the property market. Remember we talked about how Evergrande operates? Their operation is heavily reliant on getting new loans from banks. With such tightening of liquidity, suddenly they find themselves cash trapped. I have a bad feeling about this. They don't have enough money to continue the existing construction works of sole properties. With 1,003 projects in hand, this is where the nightmare begins. So it begins. Evergrande finds itself unable to sustain daily operations. As a result, Evergrande started to offer major discounts on their existing projects to raise cash to keep their business afloat. But even so, 
they are still struggling to meet their debt obligation. On top of that, many new home buyers are now worried that the company will be gone and unable to complete the projects. Just imagine, if you bought a house and the developer runs away, how would you feel? That's why we are seeing all this footage of people gathering at Evergrande's HQ to seek compensation. Question 5. Why are people comparing Evergrande's crisis to Lehman Brothers? Evergrande is due to pay out interest worth $84 million on the 23rd of September 2021. Another interest payment is due the following week on the 29th of September. If these defaults happen, investors who bought into Evergrande bonds worldwide will likely be affected. We're all gonna die! The scale of its debt reminded people about what happened to Lehman Brothers and how it spiraled into a global financial meltdown. While that could be possible, I think the chances are slim. This is highly improbable. Question 6. Will Evergrande cause a global financial crisis? To begin with, if we were to compare this to the 2008 global financial crisis, the value involved was at a staggering $1.3 trillion. In comparison, Evergrande's debt, it's a small figure. Nonetheless, in my opinion, while there are a lot of similarities between the Lehman Brothers and Evergrande, the events that led to this crisis are slightly different. For those of you who need a recap, here is what happened to Lehman Brothers. In the 2000s, the US was also experiencing Experiencing a property boom. Property values shot up to the roof and many people believe that as long as you own a property, the value increase will pay for itself. Because of that, banks started giving out mortgages irresponsibly. Mortgages. 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 Even those who couldn't afford to pay loans were given a mortgage. And this is the subprime mortgage. It was already bad for the whole financial system because when debt holders default on their loans, it could cause a nationwide financial instability. Boom. As if this is not enough, the investment banks took it a step further. Many financial institutions, including the infamous Lehman Brothers, started creating a range of creative financial derivatives with high leverage to maximize their profits on these subprime mortgages. When people started defaulting, it spiraled into a global meltdown. It was the worst day on Wall Street since the crash of 1987. Thanks to greed, it's like punching a hole on a sinking ship. Back in China, the past decade of property boom and high leverage has helped Evergrande to build a property empire. But learning from the history of Lehman Brothers, the world knows that over leveraging is playing with fire. It could end up burning itself. Everything burns. So, the Chinese government started placing preventive measures by tightening the liquidity in the property markets which led to this Evergrande crisis. By now, you will notice the keyword here is preventive. In the US Lehman Brothers case, the crisis did not start because of government intervention but the lack of it. In the case of China, Evergrande is a casualty of a government intervention. So, I am pretty confident that the government has already taken this into account when they impose this new banking regulation. While it can be quite a market turbulence, it is slightly well under control and contained. This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. That's okay. Question 7. How big will this crisis be? Firstly, according to the Economist Intelligence Unit, this $300 billion loan is owed to around 171 domestic banks and 121 other financial firms. If Evergrande defaults, banks and other lenders may be forced to lend less. This could potentially lead to a credit crunch, a decline in lending activity by banks brought on by a sudden shortage of funds. A credit crunch would be bad for China because companies will find it increasingly difficult to borrow money to grow and in some cases unable to continue operating. This will dampen China's growth as the world's second largest economy. Secondly, the fall of a property developer is not just the problem of a company alone. It will drag along the entire 
supply chain that does business with Evergrande. Firms that are involved in construction, architects, material suppliers, and many more are at risk of incurring major losses, which could force them into bankruptcy together with Evergrande. From an economic standpoint, many people are going to lose their jobs, causing a hit on China's GDP's growth going forward. Putting that in numbers, Evergrande directly employs more than 200,000 workers while also providing works for as many as 4 million subcontractors for the company every year. Last but not least, Evergrande is still holding the deposit of 1.5 million properties and they probably will not be delivered to its buyers if it goes bankrupt in the coming weeks. These home buyers take family generations to repay mortgage loans. And coming to know that their property will not be completed as Evergrande goes down, losing a home is not just terrible, it's a catastrophic disaster. Over 1.5 million people losing their homes or investments will have massive if not gone economic impacts beyond just putting people out of the street. Question 8. How will Evergrande affect us? China is the second largest economy in the world and no doubt this Evergrande issue will stir up some market turbulence. However, I'm not overly concerned that this event will spiral uncontrollably like the 2008 global financial crisis. Since China by design is very close off to the outside world, it means that they are less connected with other markets around the world compared to say American markets with ours. But nonetheless, Evergrande is the most indebted company in the world. Over the years, they have issued many bonds to raise cash for their operations. Currently, their bonds account for roughly 11% of all Asia high yielding bonds. I won't be surprised that many high yield bonds will have holdings in Evergrande. If you have invested in Asia high yield bond funds, you may want to call your fund managers. No doubt, this event could potentially spook the financial market significantly. But if you believe in miracles, Evergrande is offering 560% yield return on its bonds now. You could be miraculously rich if you seize this miracle moment. By the way, it's a joke. Invest at your own risk. Anyways, in my opinion, this is a wake-up call. Moving ahead, more eyes will be on other property developers who are highly geared. So, if you plan to invest in any property stocks, do remember to pay attention to their gearings and their land bank reserves. That's all we have for today. Hashtag fuck.